does it usually uh, take you to finish one one blade? Well, yesterday I, I, I did this one in a day, but it's not done yet. Walking cane. Walking cane? There you yeah. go, uh, Kuyandi. You can get that. <laughs> it's a Ginun thing, walking cane. You sure are. It's a nice good. looking kind of one. So I forged this one this morning, just to give you a show, show you the raw. So that adjusted down this morning. So you usually work with the same type of uh, metal Can or? touch this? Yeah, go ahead, touch it. Usually you work with the same type of metal or do you use different types of metal? Mostly, my staple is um, ADCRV2. Okay. Yeah, which is a high carbon with vanadium and um, it's what's in stainless. Okay stainless steel it's not it's not quite a stainless steel i still have the same quenching process for my carbon cool, but cool. i use um i'll think of it in a minute <laughs> <laughs> it's still too early it's like, it's yeah. still, same here we haven't had our coffee yet either no worries oh, these are nice uh I, I just drink it black thank you same here Okay, that's how I like it. Do you have anything on uh, a training sword on hand? Uh, a training sword. Like a, I mean, no edge. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, I don't. Um, people ask me all the time if I can make them trainers, and I refer them to. Uh, Ray Donaldo. Oh, okay. I, I refer them to other people. Uh, Brian Rodriguez. Um, they they make good uh, trainers. The I just I, I would rather spend my time making live blades. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not mounted, so it will. How long did it take you to make the the, the head axe? Oh my God! Uh, a couple of days. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah. When when I forged this one. I'm, I'm not joking. When I held it up and I was looking at the profile like that, the lightning struck across the street. <laughs> oh, that's pretty awesome. It's uh, <clears throat> ancestors communicating. Yeah. Uh, okay, that one is sharp. So careful. Yeah. That's nice because uh, uh, my parents are from Ilocos, so. Okay. So I was like, yeah, I definitely yeah. want one of those. Yeah. Have you ever seen a Bellarau? It's not finished. Nice. Or supposedly this this. This knife was found like throughout the Philippines and then it just kind of mysteriously disappeared and now nobody has one anymore. Wow. Or they do, but it's hard to find. Cool, yeah. Andy is going. <laughs> so what's the price when you couldn't think? Um, that one I was probably going to sell for 900 900 And then um, your handles and um, the scabbards, what are those made out of? So this scabbard is cherry cherry wood and that's brass pinned okay. and then the handle is ebony and then this the hand guard has um brass inlay if you turn it like that you can see oh, okay it's cool yeah, that hand guard has brass inlay and then like that too. this hand guard has is brass with aluminum inlay wow you to burst the color, huh? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. So when people like uh, put it in order with you, how long? What's your turnaround time in creating a blade for them? Uh, if they're first in line, about two weeks. So it, this one is Indonesian. So that's um, curly maple, paduk, brass, has a cold peen tang, goes all the way through, and then Whoa. double folders, and then. Uh, Indonesian, because here's the uh, Ganesha. There's the elephant. Uh, the elephant tusk. Nice. And that one's old. And we have this guy, which is oh, goes that's here. That's what I want. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. That's nice. And they're all oil. How do you use that? Uh, so it goes in the front or side or back? Yeah, it, you could do it in the rear, uh, but you really have to train the draw because it'll it'll cut it'll cut, cut you up. it'll cut right through through your belt it'll cut through your clothes and of course you 
So yeah, you can either wear it in the front or the back here. But I haven't figured out this girl yet. <laughs> yeah, they're like, don't, don't read, <laughs> don't try to copy the raid movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have a seahorse. So that's uh, purple heartwood and abalone shell, mother of pearl eye. Yes. Wow. Brass ferrule. And you do the carvings of the sheath also? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do all my metal work, leather, wood. They're all hand forged, except for the the little blades. Okay. I don't forge. I don't forge those. Everything else is hand forged. So, so how did you learn your, your carving skills? Um, trial and error. Okay. <laughs> Self taught. Yeah. Nice. That's kukri. Yeah, that's my that's my leather tatak, and then I have a. Um, Metal tatak as well. Oh, yeah. So your family is Ilocano, right? Eh? Yep. And then your family? Nico. I'm learning about the Minas Bad. Okay. So that's that's gonna be next. So cool. I, I studied the blade before I try to make one. Nice. That's a very intimidating yeah. axe, you know? Yeah, because um, I saw this, uh, he's, I don't know if he's from Ireland or from Europe, he, someone sent someone to go to head axe. He's like, man, I love this axe. <laughs> he's like, he had one of those ballistic dummies. And just like, was like, yeah, it's brutal. It's <laughs> so my my prized possession is here. Uh, that's a Kolsva anvil. It's uh, 240 pounds. And then the stand itself, I think, is over 200 pounds. And that was custom, custom welded. And then I have my, my little forge there, gas forge. I think it's like 20 inch. So does your neighbors complain about the noise? No, we, you know, I have great relationship with my neighbors. They're, um, they're really sweet ladies. They've been here for a long time and they don't mind. Yeah, they don't mind. I don't know about the people across the street though. <laughs> this is a leg vice, one of the old, old black. These are kind of hard to find. But it goes all the way to the ground. So you can I use this actually for foraging as well. Nice. My assembly table. My grinder, my, one of my primary tools. So I have different settings, attachments, different wheels. Six inch wheel, I usually do all of my, um, my hollow grinds for like the karambit. And then of course, this is... Ooh, you can see how the space that I work in is like extremely tiny. Kind of kawawa. Hey, that's how we make do with what we got, man. Pinoy, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I like to think that it's kind of a, a blacksmithing tradition as well as a Filipino tradition to work with what you have. Yeah, I saw, was it? I don't know if the, he was Filipino, but this Asian dude on Forge and Fire took like an old satellite dish uh -huh. <laughs> just because he was making a blade. Yeah. And he put coal on it. Nice. And, uh, it, and he he actually won because like he didn't have the fancy stuff. Yeah. So he was being resourceful with yeah. that. So you're experimenting with, with the body song handles. Yeah. But really, I'm trying to perfect my my sword techniques. Okay. You know? Because uh, there's actually a lot of body song makers, you know, but there's not a lot of sword makers, mm. Filipino sword makers. Not in this part of the world anyway. Okay. So what would you say is like your um the most difficult uh Filipino blade to to create? Oh probably I mean this is not Filipino, it's Indonesian, Malaysian, but anything with a negative curve. Cause um so whenever I put this on the platen, right, if I'm if I'm gonna be beveling it, you can see it's the same thing. Same thing if this were a, a sharpening stone, you're trying to sharpen it, you can't do it on the flat. So you have to use a technique where you use the corner. 
so you're using angles. So it's very tricky. Um, there's a lot of a lot of people that a lot of blade makers they refuse to do the negative curve blades because they're very difficult to make. Mm. Yeah. So is this and a then, ginong thing knife? Yeah. So uh -huh, yeah, it's a ginong thing. This is just a, like a raw. What it looks like, all ugly before <laughs> heat treatment. So, for example, you have a flat piece of steel here. If I heat this up in the forge and I'm hammering on this side, what this wants to do, the displacement of the steel, because the steel doesn't, it doesn't disappear, it just moves. Mm -hmm. When you hit one side of it, it displaces and it starts to bow this way. Okay. So with a, cur uh, with a negative curved blade, we need it to, cur to go the other way. So I have to take this and put it in the vise and then hammer it and then bevel it again and then correct the, the curve on it. Okay. So the, I would say the negative curves are, are one of the more difficult blades to make because most blades are positive curves. Mm. Queen Andy, I saw his collection of blades and he's like, could never have enough. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my wife's a metal worker. She does these. Well, she does design so stuff. Yeah, we're both metal workers. Okay. So do you, do you make and sell those as well? She does. Okay. Yeah, she does. Do you want to do a plug for her <laughs> about uh, any of her metal designs and work? Yeah. Well, how can people find out about that too? Um, Mila Bell Art on Instagram and Mila Bell on Facebook. Bell is spelled uh, B E L L E. So she's actually my welding instructor, my wife. Yeah. So almost all of my blades are hand cut, uh, grinded. This one, this is a part of the combat line. So I got tired of, of of hand cutting every one of them. So I just went ahead and had them jet cut. Okay. And then I do the same with my karambit. Then I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this scrap steel. Make it another art piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one and the karambit, these are jet cut. But most of them are, are hand cut. Nice. So these are the only ones I don't forge by hand. So what would you say is like your uh, uh, favorite um, conceal everyday carry? Oh, um, I use this one. So it's a box, it's model after box cutter. So I call it the peanut. Yeah. How long did it take you to make that one? This one was hand cut. And I think I forged this one as well. Um, and it took me a day to finish the sheath and everything. Nice. Because of the process, like it's, um, you know, there's a tempering process, there's a um, epoxy curing process, you know, time, it, it just takes time. Yeah. I was like, so after you're done, where do you usually do your test cutting? Uh, usually on that table there. Okay. And then I have like, you know, all these things hanging, where I can hang bottles and, and stuff. Cool. gas because you know I live in a residential neighborhood and it burns actually pretty clean it's uh, pretty efficient okay. but um, the problem you know the the trade-off is like um, you know the coal forge introduces carbon while the propane is just like you know it's, it has it like a little it's like a little grill <laughs> oh, pretty much you roast marshmallows on <laughs> Have, have you tried, have you ever experimented with um, with uh, coal or forging with coal? Actually, um, my, my instructors do coal. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't had a lot of chance to. Okay. Yeah, just because of where I am. If I, you know, when I buy a house in the country, it'll be different. So for people that watch that show Forging Fire, like, 
sometimes like they'll use water and oil. When do you choose which type of liquid to, to quench? In? Uh, certain metals prefer different um, consistencies when they quench. I use oil because it's less violent. Um, water is extremely violent when, it, when you quench with water and it's much more likely to crack and warp. So oil is a little bit more gentle because it's thicker, it's more consistent. How often do you have to change that oil? I've never changed it so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going. But it's full of um, refractory cement, because I do hamon. Uh, hamon is like the, the Japanese katana swords that have the, the, waves. the, the waves in it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I use a lot of hamon, so now the bottom of it's full of uh, refractory cement that falls off during quenching. So. I'm gonna have to change it out pretty soon. <laughs> so what would you say is like the, um, the challenges of creating short blades, medium blades, and long blades? The longer the blade, the more difficult it is. The longer and thinner it is, the more difficult. Because uh, everything is balanced, right? So um, with your geometry, if it's, you don't want it too thick because then it's too heavy. You don't want it too thin because it's not enough mass. Uh, with your, your heat treatment, you don't want it too soft because it'll bend. You don't, don't want it too hard because it'll crack and break. So um, same thing with the edge. Uh, you want it blunt enough where it doesn't chip or roll, but you need it sharp enough so it cuts. So it's, it's always like balancing. She's doing the cutting. <laughs> You think you're going to hold it? <laughs> <laughs> you like that idea. <laughs> open? Maybe open. Not close. Okay. First one was clean. <laughs> So I'm assuming you keep that next to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> that blade next to the bed. I'm not gonna make it wrong. Nice. Very nice. And what what blade is that one? Dahong Palay. Tagalog blade. Leaf rice. Do you charge accordingly to the the, the length or the the um the design of the blade? More of the time that I put into it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because people are kind of surprised that the smaller blades cost as much as the big ones. Mm. It's it's kind of the same principle of like uh, sometimes a bigger gun will be cheaper than a smaller one because all the components are smaller, so it takes more time 